It's said that construction workers once used a crane to line up five giant iron balls and created a massive Newton's cradle by swinging the last one to strike the rest. But is this real or just a myth? We all know how a Newton's cradle works. When one ball hits the others, it transfers energy through the line. Tests have shown that the energy transfer efficiency can reach up to 98%. So Adam decided to make his own steel ball setup to test it. Surprisingly, his version achieved a 97% energy transfer rate, almost identical. But here's the catch. His balls were 23 times heavier than the original. Losing just 1% more energy with that much added weight? That means scaling up might actually work. Next, they experimented with 33-pound, 15-kilogram steel balls. This time, the energy loss was around 6%. That's 3% worse than the previous test but still, the concept held up. Larger balls could still function. So they planned an even bigger experiment. They decided to build a supersized Newton's cradle using a mix of steel and concrete wrecking balls. But when they tested it, the results were shocking. About 80% of the energy was lost on the first impact. By the second swing, there was almost no movement at all. The problem? They used concrete as a filler material. They couldn't forge solid steel balls at that size, so they tried a steel shell with concrete inside. Now they're brainstorming how to fix the issue. What do you think would be the best material to use as the filler? What would happen if someone was put inside an inflatable ball and then thrown out of an airplane? To find out the truth, Adam has already lined up a test subject, Buster. But before putting Buster into the inflatable ball, they need to know what would happen if he was simply thrown out. The plan, take a helicopter up to 1,000 feet and drop Buster straight down. Multiple impact sensors are attached to Buster to measure the force of the landing. The impact reading helps determine whether the force is survivable. If the indicator turns red, it means fatal injuries. Once everything is set, Adam board the helicopter with Buster. At the target altitude, Adam first drops a sandbag to check the landing spot. Once confirmed, it's Buster's turn. Without hesitation, Adam gives Buster a solid kick out of the helicopter. Buster begins a vertical free fall and eventually hits the ground with a loud thud. Even though Buster's body is made of plastic, he ends up completely mangled on impact. All the sensors on him turn red, which means the force was deadly. His falling speed reached 120 miles per hour. At that rate, not even Jesus could save him. But now the question is, what if he were inside the inflatable ball? Would the result be any different? Do you believe this kind of rumor? Two semi-trucks crash head-on on the highway. Their cabs get tangled together. But when the wreckage is pulled apart, a completely flattened car is found wedged in between. Is it real or fake? Adam decides to spend big to put it to the test. He starts by purchasing two brand new trucks and skips straight to large-scale testing. The plan? Install a pulley system underneath a car, then use two steel cables to link the trucks and trailers together. As the trailers move forward, they'll pull the trucks into a head-on collision, right over the car. While you're still wondering how this will even work, the team is already finishing up the prep. Once the crash test dummies are seated, it's time for the real deal. Adam gives the signal. The two trailers pull the cables at equal speed. The trucks accelerate as planned. The pulleys are under massive tension. At 500 feet apart, the trucks are already going 50 miles per hour. Everything is going according to plan. Switched to the next shot, the trucks collide head on, right on cue. Playback shows the moment of impact was almost perfectly synchronized. The two trucks are crumpled into a heap and the car nowhere in sight. At the crash site, the car is found completely crushed. Let's break down what happened. The trucks collided at a combined speed of 80 miles per hour. The front ends were reduced to twisted metal, but they didn't actually fuse together. The car was flattened too, but it wasn't trapped between the truck cabs. In other words, the rumor is busted, but the team isn't done yet. They're determined to recreate the viral myth as closely as possible. Legend has it that a pilot once strapped a rocket booster to a car and tore across the desert at insane speed. The story goes that the car hit a bump, launched into the air, reached 350 miles per hour, and didn't stop until it flew off a cliff. To recreate this wild scenario, Adam got his hands on a fourth-generation Chevy Impala and began a serious transformation. First, he stripped the car removing the seats and anything unnecessary. Then, he installed a custom steel frame that stretched from the back of the car all the way up to the dashboard. Next came the electronics. 
Since no one was exactly volunteering to drive a rocket-powered car, they converted it into a remote-controlled vehicle. They wired up the steering, gas, and brakes with various actuators to make full remote driving possible. Phase 2. Setting up a mobile command shelter because you don't want to be anywhere near a car with a rocket strapped to it. Rocket boosters carry real explosion risks, so the team needed protection, and this truck was the perfect choice. They planned to weld a steel frame around the cabin, then reinforce it with bulletproof glass. After the upgrade, it looked like something straight out of a zombie apocalypse movie. Meanwhile, the Impala's remote control system was finally ready for action. Next up, heading to the test site for final launch prep. 